The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks so much for kicking off your trading day right here. We kick things off in green territory market. Clawing back a decent portion of those losses. We were just above 5,000. Did you think we were going to be by 9 a.m. this morning as of about 3 p.m. yesterday when the market was at 49.36 in the S&Ps? quite a charge higher in about the last 35 minutes of trading yesterday you get up to 49.70 you have the s and p's are up by about 22 points right now that's four tenths percent in the green trading at 49.93 nasdaq 100 pretty similar action right you accelerate lower off the open yesterday some hot cpi numbers you make a low of 17,000. 542 with 230 points already above that price level you're up by about half a percent in the nasdaq 100 the dow up about three tenths percent 106 points in the positive, 38,439, and the Russell up by 1.3%, but still well off. I mean, Russell, how about a day for the Russell yesterday, man? You traded down 100 points, folks, from where you were on Monday near the close, 2060. We got below 1960 yesterday. That's almost a 5% acceleration, man. Just absolute volatility in the Russell. Jumping back to the S&Ps for a moment. You take a look at this index, you take a look at the acceleration, where we were 8.30 yesterday, we were trading at about 5,025. On a Fibonacci basis, we're right at the 6.18. You did get briefly above that price level to 5,000. We're now literally right at the 6.18. That's where you kind of chopped around at 5 in the morning as well. And interesting to note that we are just uh, about a few points away from where you were for that first bid that you got at about 11.45 a.m. yesterday morning. It's going to be an important day, man. Is this a dead cat bounce? Quite the bounce off of the lows yesterday. That was quite a CPI number that we got yesterday, to say the least. How about Bitcoin, man? It's not stopping. 52000 bucks. This thing is on a tear. You have the first acceleration with the market. You trade up to almost 50000 The ETFs get approved. You dip below 40, and since then, we're up by 12,000. You're up by 30% off the lows of January. Bitcoin up 2,300 bucks. Ethereum on a similar tear, right? Ethereum was at 1,600. You're trading at 2,800 above the recent highs as well, up 130 bucks or 4.9%. Crude trading higher. We got a 78 handle in the price of crude. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks at 9.15 this morning. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 9.40 as we do each Wednesday. Always interesting to talk to both those gentlemen. With Teddy, of course, we'll talk some Forex, we'll talk some commodities, we'll talk some crude. Uh, we are bumping up against that upper boundary line. I mean, check it out, right? Look at where I put this cursor, $78. That's kind of your best fit linear regression line, I'd say, as to the highs we had going back to at least the beginning of November. Crude, ticking higher. What's that gonna do to the CPI if energy starts going against us, which is what I consider? Gold, it's been a tough one, man. When you have yield spiking higher and you have the dollar accelerating higher, that's going to that's gonna hurt things like commodities that are priced in dollars. Now, at the same time, you have gold, rise, uh, excuse me, oil rising. That's a commodity. That's a similar deal. But there's a lot more going on on the fundamentals of the crude contract, supply and demand versus a metal like gold. Gold, 2003, we were as low this morning as 1998, back to a 15-minute. There's your drop off yesterday, man. 2045 down to 2004. You take a look at this thing on a little bit of a longer term basis. Yeah, and all I'll say is we're back to an area that's been support, right? That area was resistance. You go back to March. It was also an area of resistance. You did get as high as 2085, but that 2000 mark, I mean, an area of resistance. This is a weekly. So you basically hit a high in 1993, March 13th, and it took you all the way until May 15th, so kind of two months of chopping around at that price level of 2,000, you dip lower, you get above, we're right back at that 2,000 mark right now. 2003 on the gold contract. And we jump around to notes and bonds. We're not placing orders just yet, thinker swim. Uh, the 10 year right now, we are lower. Uh, we're basically flat, but we're well off. 109.22, we were as low as 109.16. 
and you're talking about a 10-year yield that's climbed dramatically recently as we are now at 4.32%. 4 4.3, well, we'll call it 4.31 now. It's sticking around, 4.314 to be exact. 4.31%, the yield on the 10-year. One of the stories I was reading this morning, not surprising, mortgage rates are going up. Not surprising at all as we get higher rates. Now, you take a look at this thing on a little bit of a longer-term basis. There's your daily. We're now back to the 50% almost. The 50% pullback is 109.10. And realistically, um, these aren't lined up to the tick here. Let's do it to the tick, man. That's supposed to be 105. Well, I'll do it at the break. Uh, we're basically at a 50% pullback of the entire acceleration you had from October. All right. Now, what's remarkable here is remember what happened in stocks, right? You had the relationship going on that the tenure, you had higher price, lower yield. So as the yield was dropping dramatically, and, and the market was pricing in many Fed cuts, okay, because yields were dropping dramatically. We had the yield hit 3.8% around the end of the year. We're almost right back there at the beginning of February as well. Okay, so yields drop dramatically. Well, what happens? The market accelerates higher dramatically into the end of the year, right? You take a look at the S&P on a similar basis. Here's your acceleration from the end of October to December 29th. You had the S&P straight from 4,100 up to 4,800. Now, the conversation you have to be aware of, folks, is that since that time frame, we've now given up 50% of that move in bonds and the market still has plowed higher. And it's done it on earnings, okay? So there is a factor there that you gotta price in. But boy, these higher yields are gonna weigh on the market to a certain degree. Sitting at 5,000, sitting at a, you know, 17,778. Just pay attention to the Russell and the move you had yesterday, man. Look at the run you had in the Russell. The run, uh, excuse me, that's the Dow. Look at the run you had in the Russell. The Russell traded up, what, 450 points, 25% easy over that time? I mean, right in line. And you're still, yeah, and you're still sitting at almost 2,000 in the Russell from 1638 when that run in rates began. So. And there's your dollar. As we're now above the 618, we just hit a high yesterday of 104.96. We touched a high of 104.97 today, back to a 15 minute on the dollar. Dollar strength, man. You got the yields, 10 year yields above 4.3, which is absolutely remarkable when you think that we were at 3.8 not that long ago. Taking a look at the entire curve, you got the two year, 4.62. 10 year, 4.31 as I talked about there. And let's just see where we're at, man. So I always talk about where we are on those five year laddered CDs. And we are now approaching a level where you're talking about a five year ladder. You lock in non callable 4.42%. Yeah, 4.42%. We're above five at one point. So there's still room to go, obviously, as the 10 years only at 4.3. We were at 5% at one point, but you're talking about a ladder of 4.42 for a five year. Not a bad risk free rate of return right now, especially if you want to diversify in a retirement situation. You had, uh, you know, this entire run up, up to almost 5,000. Remarkable resurgence in the S&Ps. We got a lot to talk about today, man. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hinks from Schwab Network Fast Market. Stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes, folks. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures up by 22 points right now. We're trading at 49.92. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV from the Schwab Network Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. And boy, Kevin, let's jump into it, man. We got quite a fast market yesterday and today. What do you think about this market, man? Good morning. Yeah, the market had to come to grips with something, frankly, Tommy, that we've been talking about on the Schwab Network for a couple of weeks and actually a couple of months, and that is the risk, or in yesterday's case, the reality, that inflation is firming. And it's a little stickier than we'd like it to be. And the wages data in payrolls and the prices paid in ISM and now in, in inflation in CPI, it's all a little higher than we'd like it to. And so what, what does that do for the market? It pushes it out and it pushes the numbers to lower in terms of rate cuts. So I think the market, you know, big sell off yesterday. Uh, you've got a little bounce going on this morning in the market, but boy, I wouldn't trust this uh, little rally. It, I, I would watch how this day closes because uh, big sell-offs like that on a tone change off the highs rarely are just one day, Tommy. I love talking to you as we kick off this trading day, man, and you almost beat me to the question. And as you wrapped up that great analysis, as I was going to say, give me a little feel of what you're thinking here. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it's a little skeptical because, boy, those are some harsh numbers, man. And I, I found myself thinking back to Chairman Powell's words. You know, he had the Fed meeting, of course, he has the press conference, and then he goes on 60 Minutes. And just with the way he talked about on 60 Minutes, that we were in a period for 20 years where nobody even talked about inflation. Nobody thought about it. We have to get back there. And then we see numbers like that. And I'm like, man, we are so far away from nobody talking about inflation. Um, and what does that lead them to do? But we got the 10-year right now. What do, you, what do you think about yields? I mean, they basically in the same conversation as you just put it, quite a move. We're above 4.3% right now on the 10-year when we were sitting at 3.8%. I, I think, you know, the expectations were sky high. We saw it. What do you think about where we are right now? You got mortgage rates back up a bit, but above 4.3 on the 10-year. Pretty remarkable. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, that should concern investors, not because the market's unhealthy or the economy's unhealthy, but it may have something to do with the stock market, which means now you've got the two-year yield, Tommy, and a, the two-year yield in a real interesting spot. If you look at the chart back to December, 
it needs to hold this 455 level or it could go significantly higher. And that is working against the lower interest rate rhetoric, right? You, you've now got the 10-year yield creeping higher towards, uh, you know, the 10-year yield. I'm looking on my board. It's, it's 4.3. You've got the dollar about to go 105. You've got the euro about to go through lower than 107. You've got crude oil. Tommy, that 20 days ago was 70 and a half. It's now 78 and a quarter. And a big part of what kept the inflation numbers muted yesterday in the CPI was a 9 tenths drop in energy, which was a 3.3% drop in gasoline. Well, crude's rallied a lot since those numbers were measured. So we're, you know, there's, that's problematic. Yields, dollar, crude oil. Overall valuations, a lot of things working against this stock market right now. What's working for it? Earnings in large cap tech are blowing the doors off the market with growth. And we've got NVIDIA coming up next Wednesday. So there's plenty to be excited about. But, boy, the overall level, Tommy, is getting concerning. I appreciate the analysis, man. And, yeah, it's been quite a run when you talk about it. You, you know, laid it out. It's almost across the board, right? Dollar, yields, markets, et cetera. Uh, jumping back to earnings. Hey, I got to ask you about Lyft. I haven't even talked about it on the program yesterday. A pretty remarkable clerical error when they're talking about what their profits are going to do, their margins. Um, have you ever seen anything like that? The acceleration up higher and then they just say, whoops, sorry, we meant to say that we weren't going to make um, pretty remarkable action in Lyft overnight. I got the chart up here on the Thinkorswim platform. Tommy, I'll say this pretty simply. Your earnings release and the how the way you give data to the world and the trading community shouldn't be a comedy skit, right? It shouldn't be something that gets – you had one job, and that is to put out the right numbers. That should have been checked and checked and checked. And in the trading world that we live in, we check things and double-check and triple-check. There is absolutely no excuse for what happened on the lift. And so the good numbers they put up, ruined by that mistake. Yeah, it was remarkable to see, folks. And the headline was, uh, you know, they said that their margin was expected to expand by 500 basis points, and it was going to be 50. And, and I appreciate the take, man. I just want to get, you know, as a specialist out there, you know, living in, and, and breathing it. Um, yeah, I, I agree. And I just want to get because, you know, profit margin expansion, that's like the, the thing that's most important that you talk about even on the call. So I just don't know how that that, that moment of, of all things. Either way, we move you know, forward. Here's, we here's got one last thing, Tommy. Sure. And one last thing. The way they do it, remember, I've been in the markets for 40 years. Traders like things really simple. A lot of people on the air, a lot of people like to talk about basis points. Just say percent. Sure. Just say percent. Say what it is so people can understand it. There. Sorry. I'm with you. It took me a while to get basis points yeah. in my own head. It did. Um, and I live and breathe it every day. So I, I, why not, man? I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, to the, to, we'll give them that disclaimer, at least. Uh, with that in mind, we still got some great companies coming out this week, Kevin. Do you guys have any equities you're talking about at 12 today on Fast Market? Good earnings plays today, Tommy. Number one, we'll talk about uh, Deer & Company coming out with earnings before the open tomorrow. Then like Folio will do a really fun presentation on Crocs and everything that they're doing. Uh -oh. They love, they have, they have really fascinating data on Crocs. And then we'll look at Cisco coming out with earnings after the bell today. So three really good companies to look at today, Tommy. And how many pairs of Crocs you got in the closet, Kevin? Zero. <laughs> My children have them. Kevin Hinks but that doesn't matter, as we know. I, listen, my, my son had a pair um, when he was younger. He doesn't have one right now, but exactly, man. Running around, you hose them off, they're clean. Uh, hey, whatever, you know, to each to each their own. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man, on a busy morning. We'll be watching Fast Market today, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, man. Folks, check it out. Fast Market from the Schwab Network coming up at 12 today. They're talking about three great stocks. Man, this equity, you talk about a little volatility, man. Um coming back from nothing, right? They charge higher. You go back to 2020, you train at 13 bucks up to 183. Look at these moves. Down to 45 bucks, up to 150. Kind of got the cone there. Where are we going to break out? We're trading at 106.94 right now. They're out with their numbers and you're talking about about a $9 move priced in if you want action through Friday. Yeah, $9.77. That's a decent move. You're talking about what? 8-9% priced in for Crocs on their numbers. 
Uh, check out the program, folks. Always appreciate Kevin's take, uh, the experience that he brings to it. I've learned so much myself over the years watching that program. Best way to learn is hypothetical trading. Best way to learn is trading. Uh, second best way without putting money at risk, which is what you should be doing, but you know, until you really understand things, is hypothetical trades. They walk you through them. It's the easiest way. They manage those trades. They set them up. Check it out. 12 noon every day right here on Tiger TV. And we take a look at this market as we come into the opening bell. We jump around. Some of the equities that got slammed yesterday, yeah, they're clawing back some of those. You got Amazon shares up about a buck 34, Bezos. We knew it, but he's selling shares. You gotta love how these executives time the market. He wasn't selling at 180, um, excuse me, he wasn't selling at 80, folks. He was selling at almost 180, right? Yeah, can't blame him, man. If he can find buyers at 180, and he's probably at that age, he's ready to diversify a little bit. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and you catch a lift on the open. We're trading right now up 29 points in the S&Ps right at that 5,000 mark, right where we were at about 8, 10 a.m. this morning. Let's see if we can hold it. NASDAQ 100, you catch a bid on the open as well. We pop a bid up 123 points right now. That's a gain of about two-thirds percent, 17,795. You get the Dow up 132 points, a gain of about a third of percent. 
38,462. And the Russell, particularly volatile, back above 2,000. You're up by 1.64%, 32 points in the positive. Bitcoin, 52,000. Not a bad price drag, man. Let's jump around. Yields right now. Yeah, we're sitting at about 4.3 on that 10-year. Pretty cool, the two-year Kevin was talking about, right? Hey, great point, man. Take a look at that two-year. Put it on a daily. Look where we are. Talk about right at a critical area above that gap, November 28th, November 27th. And yeah, you back it up even a little bit further than that. You dip below this area, you might have 100.30 and you drop a full point in the two-year, man. Rates are going to be going higher. And that means the Fed is really adjusting things if we come back. I mean, look, we just moved a full point from January 12th. And in that same time, we've had the 10-year go from 3.8 to 4.3. So if you ever get that another point, down there, right? You're talking about going back to almost 5% on the 10 year. That would bring you back to the lows with where we were. Don't say it can't happen the way this is market is just moving so quickly. And the market has been so wrong on so many occasions. Okay. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. So touching on that lift story, right? Beyond the clerical lever error that they had, which is inexcusable. Kevin's right. I, I love the way he said it because it took me a long time to wrap my head around what a basis point was, how it translated to percentages. Uh, and I wonder why that's kind of the default go-to terminology when talking about percentages as in basis points versus just percentages that everybody understands. Now, talking about their numbers beyond that, okay? Gross bookings up 17% from a year earlier, ahead of the estimate. Revenue, $1.22 billion, up 4% from a year earlier, in line with projections. Adjusted earnings, now this is where, $55 million in the first three months. Number of active riders increased 10% in the fourth quarter, from a year earlier to $22.4 million. But check this out. I mean, they are struggling, Okay. Active riders at the end of 2021 was almost 19 million, and they're at 22.4. They were at 22.9 coming into COVID, right? Remarkable. And then you take a look at their performance versus Uber's performance since the beginning of 2023. Uber's up 172% and Lyft is up 11%. So if you're looking to get into some exposure there, yeah, I would be going with Uber. Um, and in the same respect, right, you get the story out there today that Uber's got a $7 billion buyback plan, the first um, for the company. This company just got into profitability, you know, two or three years ago. And I do have some Uber folks in retirement account. All right. You take a look at this thing. Quite the pop on that news, justifiably. You're up to $75, up 8.75% on Uber. Now, it's up on some strong Lyft numbers as well, okay? But Uber out there, they're going to buy back as much as $7 billion in shares to return capital to shareholders. First full year of operating profit. Yeah, so not even a couple years. First full year of operating profit, $7 billion comes back to investors. Uh, and 2023, vote of confidence in the company's strong financial momentum. That's the CFO out there. Yeah, up 8.2%, man. Quite the remarkable acceleration it's had. So it racked up $30 billion in accumulated deficits over years of freewheeling spending. Uh, but last week, Dara Karoshawi, uh, I had it yesterday. They were talking to him and they were they were interviewing him and I was saying his name. It's a tough one. I'm going to have to get the, uh, the pronunciation again. Uh, but yeah, an inflection point. You know, expectations are going to be sky high when you go to profitability and you start doing $7 billion buybacks. Look at how it breaks. I mean, these channel lines, man, even when you break above. Always think of my man Bud Rolfs. You break above it. You come back. You test it. It's a breakout to the upside, which is remarkable to think when you have this thing trading from 40 and at 57, you're possibly breaking out of the channel line. But you just traded from 57 up to 75 in the span of about six weeks. Phew. And that's when you have the market, yeah, I guess you're 60 to 75. I mean, you're up 9% today, right? So that's going to that's gonna accelerate things. And you compare that to Lyft, they're getting quite a pop, 28% still, okay, on some very strong numbers. But I would be careful with Lyft, and as I put it, if I was looking to get exposure, man, 
don't cherry pick the lows of a company that, that's underperformed. Um, you go back to the, was it that article? Let me see. Versus Uber. No, nah, there was a couple I was reading last night just in terms of the comparison. It was. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Lyft still lags behind Uber. They have 30% of U.S. ride share compared with 70% for Uber since the second quarter of 2022. And yeah, last week, Uber reported a full year of profit and said trips rose 24% in the quarter to $2.6 billion. So why is Uber, the bigger company, rising 24% and Lyft has gross bookings jumping 17%? If you're looking... For exposure, I would go to Uber versus Lyft on that one, even though that equity is up 28% today. So let's talk a little bit of commercial real estate deals. I was reading this one last night, um, and I'll post this one in the den. It's a Bloomberg article, <clears throat> and it just speaks to some of the crisis that is possible coming down the line of commercial real estate. In Manhattan, brokers have started to market debt backed by a Blackstone Owned office building at a 50% diff discount. A prime office tower in LA sold in December for about 45% less than its purchase price. They can't quite be sure, okay, what buildings are not going to get paid off or refinanced at the end. It's very difficult to figure out exactly, and one or two buildings can crush a bank like New York Community Bank when it comes to at least trading just dramatically lower in remarkable fashion as we know now getting into some of these numbers where are we all right I'm, I might have to find it after the break to get some of the quotes so as of December offices accounted for 41 percent of the value of distressed U.S. properties apartments are high on that list as well 67 billion in potential distress Yeah, I'll have to get a couple of the different statistics they talk about in here. Here we go. This is what I want to talk about. Regional lenders account for 70% of the commercial real estate debt maturing through 2025, okay? With the top 25 banks making up for the rest, according to Morgan Stanley, it's all regional banks in here. Yeah, and I'm going to find even more statistics that speak to that. Uh, regional banks in particular with vast exposure to particular areas. New York Community Bank, only a couple buildings on which just hampered them. So we will see. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll be talking some Forex, some commodities, some currencies. Stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up in even 20 points right now. And now we talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad, as we do every every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report right under the newsletters tab. The Tiger Forex report, you can sign up for $97 for a month. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. And don't forget, Teddy's got a couple of great webinars out there, Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads, $97, and Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Option Strategies with our man Teddy Kegstad as well. Both great webinars that you can watch as many times as you'd like. And let's jump into it. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Where do you want oh, to start? Boy. Do we have enough action going on this week, man? What do we got going on? Where do you want to begin? Um, well, I yeah. think the numbers is where we should start out with. You know, Perfect. I mean, I've been saying it for months. The economic numbers are more, more important than they have been in probably over a decade, you know, especially as we're trying to figure out what the Fed's going to do. CPI, obviously, you know, the market reacted, and then we had a flat line in the currencies, and then uh, we had – this is one thing is the CPI in the UK that came out this morning a little bit better than expected. So that kind of put the brakes on the slide, I would say, as far as the uh, pound dollar, meaning that the dollar is probably a little overdone now from that news from yesterday. Now, we do have unemployment claims tomorrow and we still have uh, building permits on Friday. And that one could be a, a big one to shake up the interest rate market. You know, so uh, that's one I would definitely watch today. I think that you're going to see probably the S&Ps hold up in the bond market probably in the interest rate market pull back a little bit as we you know track through the day and the lunchtime and stuff like that I wouldn't expect a big bounce you know I'd be very careful being uh, bearish the dollar right now and I would definitely be watching those numbers and we've had we've got some pretty interesting uh, situations like the the US dollar yen is probably the one you have to watch out for the most because it's above that 150 even area which is the threshold for the Bank of Japan and now we also have oil breaking out to the upside, you know, and we also, which is probably going to get up to that 81 to 83 area, I think. And okay. then we also, if that does happen, that's going to put pressure on the yen and give the U.S. dollar yen a lift, especially if yields continue to, uh, to break out to the downside, which interestingly enough, like I'm saying that today, I think you're going to see yields start to pull back. But I think it's going to be a profit-taking move. I'd be very, very, very careful. I think that you're going to see newer lows in the uh, uh, interest rate market because uh, I can see the tenure and especially the short terms still pressing the lows. I wouldn't try and call a bottom in that move at all. And talking about lower price, higher yield, correct? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. No, it's it's quite the move, man. And, yeah, that dollar yen, pretty remarkable. We're back above the, the 150, pushing 150, 190, the highs that we had back in October. Um, what do you think about how well, and I know, you know, we're always talking about Forex currencies, um, but how well kind of the market has held up even in the face of this reversal we've had from October. Now, we've had some gangbuster earnings, of course, but it's pretty remarkable. You got the S&P sitting at 5,000 right now, and 
we've had yields kind of give back from 3.8 to 4.3 or so. And I know I'm going beyond Forex, but what do you think about that as it ties in? Because it's just a remarkable resilience right now. Oh, it absolutely ties in, though, <clears throat> Tommy. Uh, right now with the S and P's, it's pretty obvious that earnings are driving the market. You know, it's a. I talk to a lot of people. They're always like, "Teddy, why is the market pushing these highs?" I don't understand. I'm like, earnings. I'm like, as long as earnings are good. It, it, I, I remember being in the S and P's when the economy was in the complete gutter for over a year, two years. We were in true recessions by the number, if you will. You know, and this S and P's were railing. I mean, every day we'd be like, "Yeah, we're making new highs. We're making new highs. We're making new." highs and everyone's like what in the world is going on with the stock market well the stock market's forward thinking you know and then there's also you got your equity curves <clears throat> cycles of curves you know right now you have gold that's under restraint a little bit your interest rates are high as they go higher that also you know you're, there's a cyclicality to these markets and right now we're coming to the end with this with the s p's i'd be careful after earnings season as far as you know i'm not going to try and say there's a top in the market but we could easily see you know, a three, four percent correction, especially if economic numbers start to, you know, point that way, like building permits, for uh, for example, on Friday, if bu building permits drop by, say, a significant number, especially if it's way below forecast, you know, that's something that would cause a shakeup in the bond market. You know what else it's going to cause a shakeup in is the S&P 500 pit for sure. Without a doubt, the futures will react off of that news. You know, I mean, building permits aren't the biggest economic number, but they are right now when you're looking at where inflation you know, it has been it has subsided, but it hasn't gone away. You know, the, the, the media may keep saying they want the, you know, the Fed to start cutting rates. And I heard you earlier say, you know, about the one article, why the public's like, why haven't they started cutting rates? It's really simple. The numbers don't justify it. Numbers are economic numbers are lagging. Now we've had enough time where they haven't done anything. And they're like, oh, geez, inflation's still there. And oh, look at yesterday's CPI. CPI went up. You know, that is a big deal, especially considering what they've tried to accomplish, you know. So just if, if we stay at the rate, the CPI just has this kind of outlook just for the next couple of months, you're probably not going to see a rate cut until September. Right now, you're yeah. looking at May is probably the first time, maybe even June before they even do one quarter point, you know. Just in time for the election. Just in time for the election. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, that's but that. No matter what, I believe it'll I be there it's this just, summer. I mean, it's going to be hysteria <laughs> either way. Um, so why not add some some cuts that come in <laughs> like right a month or two uh, ahead? But I agree. I agree, man. Because you know, I go back to that. Yeah, I don't know if you saw him on 60 Minutes. I'm sure you saw the take on it. He was just so strong. And and the the comment that caught me the most was when he just and it brought it home. You know, that uh, we got to get back to when nobody's talking about inflation. You know, you're not even worried about it. It's like that's all everybody talks about kind of. And then you get a CPI number like that. And the compounding of the in the inflation is really what gets you, man. You go 10 percent, you go 8 mm percent, -hmm. then you go four and you go four. My goodness, you add it all up, and then that, right. that's how do you get out of talking about well, that? Well, here's well, a perfect example of inflation for you. I went to meet a friend for lunch yesterday. We each had the same thing. We had French onion soup. She had a cup. I had a bowl. She had a Caesar salad. I had a chicken Caesar salad and one Coke. Do you know how much it costs with the tip? Seventy-five dollars for Oof. two soups and two salads and one Coke. Oh, That's ridiculous. Man. I'm sorry. I mean, like seventy-five dollars two years ago. <laughs> I could go out for, just for myself and have a nice dinner. I, I was just for say, a little bit more. Guys, I'm getting dinner for two. <laughs> I see receipts drinks. like that only from uh, Las Vegas in the Super Bowl, man. Not Chicago right. having lunch for a soup and right. salad. No, exactly. I, it is. It's yeah. It's yeah. um. And that's and that's where. And so I agree that you know if the chairman is being real and you know it, it would make sense that to a certain degree he wants that to be the case. Um. And and his legacy not to be that he let you know generational inflation soar. That boy, they got a long way to go before nobody's talking about inflation, right. man, because these compounding numbers are pretty critical. Yeah. Hey, exactly. what do you, um, you know, 81, 82 bucks on crude. So is that something where you're, you're looking possibly for it to chop around and then longer term, maybe going higher? If we get to that level, because we're almost at 79 right now, which is remarkable, you're up more than mm -hmm. a percent. Um, do you have any analysis there? Are you going to look yeah, for how we I, trade I, at I that think price that, point? I think, that, I think we'll get a little toppy around 81, just over that. And I think you'll probably see it spike up to 83. That, and we may start to see a digestion phase in that area, too, where it'll be probably from 80. And see, right now, I was looking at 70 to $75 a barrel. And now we've broken out to the upside. Now it's probably going to be around that 80 to $83. Now, if we get above 83 and can close above that and sustain, well, then we got a major issue. Then, we, then we're looking yeah. at something like we could see $100 oil again. 
time. And then we have inflation coming back in a big way. <laughs> yeah, nobody's right. going to stop talking about inflation if gas prices hit four or five bucks. Correct. Again, that's for sure. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that soup and salad yesterday, man. Uh, <laughs> listen, well, thanks so much for coming on. I'll talk to you next week, man. <laughs> Take Thanks, care, Tommy. Tommy. Folks, check it out. The Tiger Forex Report. Outstanding newsletter. Go sign up for it during the break. You got a 90-day money-back guarantee. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now. You're up by about 23 points, trading at 49.94. NASDAQ 100, you're up about four tenths percent. You give up some of that pre-market gain. You got the Dow hanging on, but only by about 67 points, up by about two tenths percent. And we got a treat to wrap up the program. We got a man, Mike in Somerville, on the line. Mike, hello again. Good morning, brother. All right, Swami. So, let's start it off with that Bruins Lightning game last night, which I Ooh. was at. You were at it? Oh, man, what a game. You know, I caught the end of it. I had looked at That's amazing. And uh, for those that didn't see it, man, there was a shootout. The, the Lightning won. But, man, what a game, huh? Oh, buddy, I was in the boardroom. I don't know if you know the boardroom. It's the, it's the end of the garden, and you go in there. It's all the food you can eat, shrimp, everything. Okay. You go in we got there, and there's like 200 people in there with you. And I was in the boardroom last night watching that game, buddy. You know, they have a they have a section just like that in Tampa, man. That my dad and I had tickets in there. It's a great way to see a game, man, when you can. And what a game. 
I haven't been to a Lightning game in a while. I got to bring Tommy. He's just at the age, man. I plan on making it. Um, so we're going to make it to a game. I was just looking at tickets. Isn't that funny? Yesterday, Mike, I was just looking at tickets, middle of the day, and I saw they were playing the Bruins, and I was like, ah, they're in Boston, though, and you were going to the game. I got to love yeah, it, man. I so, took that what, game for my buddy. Okay, number two, hold on. Number two, Massachusetts companies lost billions of dollars yesterday because they shut the whole place down, and we got a half an inch of snow. They shut the whole place. They had a state of I emergency, heard. Tom. The whole the whole place That's was shut down, and we didn't get not even a half an inch of snow, Tom. It's a bummer, man. I've been through it, and especially as somebody that has kids now, when you see how that goes, right? They shut down schools. Um, boy, it just throws everything in array in a big oh, way when God, they shut God, it down. Oh, God, Oh, buddy, everything was shut down. State of emergency, <laughs> buddy. We didn't even get a – we didn't even get a – it didn't even cover the grass, buddy. That's how bad it was. Hey, we got to wrap it up, but crude. Listen, we're going higher in this crew. I think I agree with Teddy, man. 78, 74 right now, and I think we're going higher in crude, man. Oh, by the way, I just signed up for your newsletter. I just did it just now, and I'll talk to you later, pal. Thank you. I love your call, Mike. Have a great day, man. Thanks for calling. Right. Thanks Bye -bye. so much for the support. Folks, got to love it. S&P's up by 25. Market's in the green. Stay tuned, folks. We got Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. I'll see you tomorrow morning, folks. Have a great day.